just my soul to burn within me because I feel him. Uh, somebody said, well, you know what? It's, it's round about 10 o'clock, but you know what? I remember before the Lord saved me, I was just getting ready to go out. Oh, y'all don't want to have no church tonight. When the Lord saved me, I was just getting ready to go party. The night don't even get good until around about 11 o'clock. Oh, y'all, some of y'all must not be no ex partiers but I know how it is. We come to church and perpetrate, but you know, round about this time, you weren't even having a good time. And I made up in my mind when I got saved, I wasn't going to do any less for God than I did for the devil. Oh, come on, here's somebody. I made up my mind, I'd party for God all night long. And if I ain't got no strength, I beg God to give me some more strength. Because the more I think about what God has done for me, the more I want to bless him. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here to bless God for a few minutes. Oh, come on, somebody put your hands together and begin to bless him like you know him. Oh, yes. Come on and bless him like you know him. Y'all standing there looking at me. I'm not God. I said bless him like you know him. I wish I had some sanctified folk in here. Oh, come on, here, somebody. I wish I had some sanctified Baptist folk, some sanctified Catholic folk. Come on, somebody, and bless the name of God in this place. He's here tonight. He's here tonight. He's here tonight. Yes, he is. Oh, you can take your seats. How many, this is your first night here? In the com oh honey, let me tell you. Look, look, I would I wish somebody that's been here already would just jump up and show these folk how we praise God in this conference. Ah, uh, hold on a minute. See, he ain't even been here because we ain't even been shouting. Come on, somebody. How about just open up your mouth and stand in flat foot and shout in glory? Hallelujah. God, I give you the my God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I don't want to get stirred up. I'm trying to go in slow motion. Yes, God, because I feel the power of God in this place. And if y'all don't be careful, we'll have church right now. See, I don't know about you. You might be sitting next to somebody that don't feel like praising God. But you need to turn and tell somebody he's done too much for me. I can't shut my mouth. I can't shut out. Yes, God. My God. I don't know about y'all, but he brought me from a mighty long ways. I said he brought me from a mighty long ways. See, the person that's sitting next to you right now, honey, they looking at the finished product. But you ought to tell me, tell me you ought to saw me this time last year. You ought to saw me this time last week. And some of y'all ought to say, you ought to saw me just yesterday. I'm not the same person I used to be. Oh, you ought to ask him, look, do you feel like praising God? If you don't praise God, I got to move my seat. Because everything that's in me got to magnify God. It's in my hands, it's in my feet. to preach God I feel Shanda de oh Shanda he baba baby oh Shanda de oh Shanda yes God he under all the Shanda nothing like the anointing of God it ain't nothing like his power it ain't nothing like his anointing and I don't know about y'all but I live and I move and I have my being by the anointing of God somebody touch somebody and say I want the anointing Oh, y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. Because I don't think y'all know what the anointing is. Oh, God, the anointing is that thing that makes the devil stop in his tracks. Oh, do you, see, y'all don't know the secret to blessing God. See, some of y'all in here right now, you got some stuff that's on your mind and stuff that you're going through. Some of y'all got on the bus and on the plane and left problems back at home. But you don't understand that if you bless God, it brings on the anointing. And when the anointing shows up, the devil got to get out. Come on, somebody. Oh, the devil can't stand to stay where the anointing is. And that's why when you come to a meeting like this, you ought to start praising God like you done lost your mind. You ought to tell the person sitting next to you, I went through hell at home and I ain't going to go through hell sitting next to you. I'm going to bless God in the house. Somebody praise God in this place. Child, folk will take you through changes, won't they? You come to church and folks just sit right next to somebody, got the devil in them. Somebody don't like your hairstyle, don't like your outfit. But you ought to let them out and come here to magnify our outfit. I came to get messed up in the Holy Ghost. My God, my God. I didn't come to play church. I come to get the power of God on my life. I came here looking for deliverance. I got the house in my 19th. When I go back home and I walk in my house, I want to drop something in the living room.
bedroom. I want it to be in the kitchen, in the basement. I want to take it upstairs in the bedroom. I want God more than my necessary food. Ah, turn your Bibles if you would. I feel like, oh, Jesus. I'm trying to calm down here. I'm trying to calm down. Something happens in me when I start blessing God. Ah, you can bless God to a point that you can put something on the neighbor that's sitting next to you. Baby, you can always go back and get your hair done. Don't miss God. You can always go back to the bathroom and fix your eyeliner, but you don't sit here and miss God. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. But you know what? I remember when I was on welfare and didn't have but about two or three skirts to wear. And now God got me going to Neiman Marcus. I'm going to get to church and act like I don't want to praise God. Oh, y'all ain't see, see. See, I ain't got no witness in here. Because see, I know a lot of y'all sitting there perpetrating. You ain't always had what you had. You ain't always looked like you look. There was a time you were so ragged and didn't have enough money to pay attention. And now God done picked you up and blessed you. And turned your life around and gave you a job that you wasn't even qualified for. Come on, somebody. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. And all of us who didn't have no hair. They done made something we can create some hair. And you got the nerve not to want to praise God over a hairstyle. Come on here, somebody. I feel God in this place I believe there's enough anointing in this place to stop the devil in his tracks God I love you you want to get me started get me around a bunch of black folk that act like they don't want to praise God y'all ain't saying nothing we ain't nothing but recycled garbage nothing but a bunch of junk that's been made over again y'all ain't saying it. it's the truth you pull off some of these Versace ties and all of this, all these suits we got on, honey, you'll find a big piece of junk underneath all that stuff. Oh, ain't nobody studying your outfit. Oh, somebody tell God thank you. Somebody tell him thank you. See, that's what I'm talking about. We got to get crazy in God. We've been sitting up here long enough going through step one and step two and homiletics and dumbletics and still ain't free. But see, God said, then, then listen, in this last hour, there's another anointing that's about to hit the world. And it's that crazy slopping. Come on, somebody. Oh, we're going to go back to spitting and clapping and falling out. If you're going to get something from God, you're going to pay for it. If you're going to get an anointing on your life, you're going to sweat for it. Come on here, somebody. You're going to have to lose your hairstyle for this one. Ah, oh, baby, you ain't going to be able to stay cute. Huh? You ain't going to be able to keep your hairstyle. But God gonna challenge you tonight huh? And he wanna know Does your hairstyle mean more Than my anointing Does your outfit mean more Than getting my anointing Somebody tell God yes God Go get your Bibles if you would God been dealing with me about a word today Don't ever judge your praise by your neighbor because they don't need what you need. <laughs> Time I sit next to somebody all stiff. So that's all right because you don't need what I need. What I need is so much that I got to make sure that I stay in the realm of the spirit until God give it to me. You got to be willing to be a maniac in this hour. Ain't nobody's stunting no character and all that kind of stuff. Not when the power of God comes in. You be dignified on your job. You get to church and not crazy and thank God because you got a job. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The Bible said there's a time and a season for all things. And when you get in the house of God, it's a season to bless his name. Oh, come on here, somebody. We, 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 done, we, we done messed around here and lost something. Told somebody the other day, I went, I went to a conference and I told y'all, I really think I'm the wrong person to really to really be up here because I'm still new. Tell you, I'm the new girl on the block. I'm new. So I don't know nothing about uh, sitting on the platform and being dignified. I don't know nothing about that. So when I start jumping up and hollering, folk looking all around like, what? Honey, she don't know she's for this. This is the dignified section. They be sitting me in little different sections that I go to confidence and I sit on this side because this is where all the important people and I be jumping up and folk be looking at me. But I tell them, oh, you excuse me because I'm new at this. I don't know nothing about. I don't know nothing about being dignified. I, see, I ain't been in this thing long. Y'all ain't saying. See, I just come from a country church where I got some deliverance in my life where we pray all night long. Come on, somebody. And travail in the Holy Ghost. So when I get up here and all of this big highfalutin stuff, I don't know how to act. I don't know the, man, God, come on, somebody. See, I don't know nothing about this. All I know is that I once was blind and now I see. All I 
know is that I was sick and God healed my body. All I know is I was an institution and lost my mind. And God spoke to me and said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And just like that, my mind came back. Oh, I could come on here, somebody. I was dying of anorexia and God instantly healed my body. I had six months to live and God made death me. Oh, I don't know nothing about being dignified. All I know is when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul. My soul. It ain't me, y'all. My soul start acting up. My soul start yelling out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Tell somebody, I want this anointing. If you turn your Bibles with me. Tonight. And I'm almost finished. <laughs> Tell somebody she almost through. Second Corinthians 12. Some of y'all that missed the day church today, baby, you don't know. We churched up in here today something terrible. Honor the Lord for this great visionary, this great woman of God. Who God has raised up for such a time as this. Y'all, I tell you, and it's a blessing to have her husband standing right by her side. And somebody ought to put your hands together and bless God for the bishop tonight. And I honor all of the clergy and the men and women of God on the platform tonight whom I really haven't had the pleasure of meeting. And I say that honestly, because it's not a pleasure to meet everybody. <laughs> the Bible said, know them by the spirit. So when I look around on the platform, I'm not looking at flesh. What I sense in my spirit, my spirit is saying, it's a pleasure. And it will be a pleasure to meet them. We always want to, I just really want to meet so-and-so. And for the folk you're trying to connect with, ain't got nothing. Got stacks and stacks of invitations on my desk. The people want me to come preach at their church. I'm like, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. Because I'm ready to have stomped down church. Time to get people saved. We don't even talk about being saved no more. We don't even make no altar calls no more. Oh, y'all ain't going to like me tonight. And don't, don't, don't get scared. They ain't where I'm going. But I appreciate the man of God that got up a few minutes ago. I see, that's somebody's church I wouldn't mind going to. Somebody had church anywhere. He got up like he was in his own church. And not just that, but you can feel the power of God on him. And the Bible said to give honor where honor is due. And the subject tonight that I feel that I am wrestling with is one that is familiar to a lot of us. And I just want to discuss scripture for a few minutes with the people of God. We're going to discuss it together. Because I believe that there is no word, there is no message that is directed to a people from a speaker. I believe, and you don't have to necessarily quote me on this because when you knew, you'd probably say a lot of things. <laughs> but I believe that any word that hits the spirit of any person that is to give it, it is the Lord wanting to discuss scripture with us. And there is no such thing as the speaker has arrived. And now let me tell you what God is saying. It's to the point that I'm standing here tonight and I'm just a shell, a vessel that the voice of God is choosing to speak through 
to give you and I both an answer to our dilemma. And let the church say amen if you believe that. When I was in the hotel room tonight, and I said to myself, I said, Lord, out of all that we do, and I think the thing that really, really, really gets the people of God off track a lot of times is the spirit of discouragement. Oh God, I, I, I just, I feel this word so heavy. The spirit of discouragement is a shrewd thing because it doesn't come all of a sudden to take what you have. But it's like a cancer that just eats away at the victory that you got. Now, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about me because I know, I know I get discouraged. Uh, you should have saw me a couple days ago. And I don't mean that just by saying it because it's cute. And I was walking down the street and tears coming down my eyes. And I said, God, and I told the Lord, I said, God, I said, I feel discouraged. And, I, and see, when you look around, it's not so much as situations that come up against you. But I don't know about you, but it seems like when things come, it comes in lows and droves. It ain't just one thing. It's everything that come at one time. Now, let me tell you what God showed me about that. Whenever you are a person and everything comes at you at the same time that's because there's so much anointing and so much potential on the inside of you the devil knows what you're going to be so therefore if he send one thing that ain't gonna stop you if he send just one more thing that ain't gonna stop you either he said I gotta get a whole bunch of stuff because what I'm coming up against is a spiritual giant I'm about to attack somebody I know got the anointed in them to destroy my kingdom so he gonna get every demon he can think of to get because he says every chance I get to attack I gotta have enough weapons but how many know the Bible said that no weapon that is formed against us is going to sometimes it just be so heavy until I don't know about y'all but sometimes I can't even I feel like I can't even get out the bed some days oh God I wish I had somebody here like me Sometimes you don't even want to get out the bed. Every time you look around, something is coming from somewhere. And, 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 and see, the messed up part about it is that you've gone too far in God to quit. And you ain't gone far enough to keep on going. <laughs> so you feel like you're trapped and your back is up against the wall and you said I can't go to the left I can't go to the right I can't call nobody because you know in this hour there is no such thing as a confidant y'all ain't saying nothing and see especially when God gonna use you the very people you think you can trust you can't even trust them because while they skinning and grinning they really jealous of what God is doing for you y'all ain't saying nothing and if you call them up and tell them that your phone bill due before it get cross town it's your light bill and your house note and you come out here and you done found chapter 13 but the devil is a liar because God came and let us know that there is an answer now let's look at this what he's saying here we've read this so many times um, give me about five minutes we've read this this so many times here in 2nd Corinthians the 12th chapter this is this is so familiar to us and I want to start down here uh, at the seventh verse because on up from the first verse down to the sixth verse he, he, he starts talking about how and he sounds a lot like some of us he said I'm, I'm a man of great revelations I've seen things in the heavenlies that I can't even discuss he's saying I'm so powerful and I'm so I'm so hooked up with God that God talks to me in such a way that there's some things he's told me that I can't even tell nobody. Now you talking about a man right here who has been restored and the greatest preacher there is in this testament. You talking about somebody who was, who was instrumental in writing almost two thirds of the Bible. But yet he gets right here to the 12th verse and said I've done things that I can't even tell you about. All the stuff I know about God is not even lawful to share with you. But he said but something, there's something that's wrong with me and I don't mind admitting it. He said 
unless he said this he said but though I would desire to glory I shall not be a fool for I will say the truth but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above which he seeth me to be or that he heareth of me not a lot of times you know people see and they say oh man he powerful she powerful she got a great unknown girl every time she get up it just makes something go all over me oh honey every time I go in here and preach I just get goosebumps honey I can run a mile when I come out of her meeting oh my god the child the anointing that just be oh they my favorite speaker but the man is saying right here in spite of what you see on me and now I'm going to stand in Paul's position today in spite of how anointed you see me tonight now I know y'all looking at me because you ain't used to speakers being honest you used to both lying to you but see I ain't got time for that I told you I'm too new to lie see in spite of all this anointing you see on me tonight in spite of all the power you sense on me there is something God I love you Jesus Oh, that, 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 that messes with me, that bothers me. And he said, look, don't look at me above that which I am because I'm not no better than some of y'all sitting right there. The only difference between me and y'all is God has called me and he's in the process of calling you. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. It ain't no different. I ain't no different than you. Behind all the turn back collars and all of the big titles, we all got struggles. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing here. And see what God trying to do is that spirit of Hollywood has got to be killed in the church because it paints the wrong picture. It makes you think that you can never be what I am. But I'm here to tell you, honey, I ain't no more than you. If it wasn't for the grace of God, y'all ain't saying nothing. We want to we wanna build up ourselves. And we want to be superstars. Oh, y'all, let me just stay right here for a minute. And we preach stuff that we ain't even lived. We go somewhere and get a couple of books and get a deep word. And get up and preach something that you ain't even walked through yourself. And when you preach it, you make the people feel responsible for it. And when they can't walk through it, then they discourage because they say, how am I going to ever live this? I'm not going to never be nothing. But God told me to tell you that, listen, listen, salvation is an event and sanctification is a process. And you are being processed. You ain't going to wake up overnight and just be it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. How old are you, mother? My mother, 58 years old. I'm 37 years old. When I got saved, some of y'all sitting there tonight, you in your 30s, you've been a sinner 30 years. And then because you get saved, you want God to bring you out in three minutes. He saves you in less than a second. But you got to give God 30 more years like you gave the devil to reprocess. Come on, somebody. The Bible said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That's a process by the renewing of your mind. Tell about that touch of money. Tell them you're going to make it. Oh, see, some of y'all ain't saying that with the truth. Do you not know that we got preachers and we got evangelists that can preach the house down but still got to come on here, somebody, because God is processing all of us. And what makes it heavier for me is that in spite of my preach, God, when I lay this mic down, he's still calling me on the carpet in the back room. He's still saying to me, now, you still got to get rid of that. I want to do this. I want to burn that out of you. I want to break that. I want to break your spirit. You got a bad attitude. Oh, y'all, come on here, somebody. Somebody, hey, you better shout glory in this place. Now watch this, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Y'all just give me a minute, I'm going somewhere. And, he, and then he said right here, he said, unless I should be exalted. Now, that word unless means just in case. Just in case, after I have shined, 
just in case after I get through prophesying and telling people phone numbers and addresses, just in case my title done blew my head up, just in case the fact, come on here y'all, just in case God called you to be a pastor and you went from one to 1,500 in less than a year, just in case you exalt yourself above your measure, what am I talking about? Not above your call, but what do, how do you measure up in the inside? I know you're a big preacher on the outside, but what is your measurement on the inside? Come on here, somebody. How big are you in God? Come on here, somebody. Some of y'all said, but you know what? Oh, he a big shot, but I'm gonna tell you, you can't be no higher than the years you got death. Oh, you find the person that's high in God. I show you somebody that's been in some depth. That's why you got people. Bishop, every time I said, my God called me to pastor. He called me to be in the van. You, baby, you just got saved this week. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, y'all, can I just, can I mess with that a little bit? I'm so sick of the church in this hour. Folks talking about, I just got saved this week. And God called, wait, wait a minute, who processed you? Let me help you with something, honey. You ain't got no original anointing. Anytime, anytime anybody get up and call by God, there is an anointing that was transmitted in your life. See, this ain't no original anointing. Somebody laid hands on me and transmitted. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You ain't going to get no anointing to preach by fasting. You don't get it by late. Come on here, y'all. You get it when you sit under somebody that's got what you're looking for. And the anointing on them, when they lay hands on you, they transmit in you the power to preach. And that's why your ministry won't last because you got it through iniquity means you got it the wrong way you didn't get it through righteousness you got it illegally I'm, I'm, I'm messing with something now I'm messing with something now I don't, I don't, I don't care. Look, look, listen, listen, let me tell y'all a story. See, 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 I was, I was young, 16, traveling in the ministry, preaching. And, I, and that said, God ain't been through nothing. They ain't paid no price for nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And see, my first pastor was saying, well, baby, you ought to come on and let somebody. No, 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 God didn't call me. And he talked to me and he showed me. And I'm going to tell you what happened to me. See, because, listen, when you're not under proper authority and you treat your pastor like he your pimp and not the man of God over your life, y'all get it. Y'all, I, I got to do this. I, I didn't mean to do this and you don't respect the God that's in his life oh you honey listen you headed for a shipwreck I don't care how many comforts you run to some of y'all just ran into victory tonight because I gotta help you tonight honey you ain't gonna find what you're looking for in no convention when you come to a conference and order to confirm with the man of God in your life that already said how you gonna look over your past and find something great in somebody else y'all ain't gonna talk back in here Man done got you saved and prayed for all your kids. Get up in the midnight hour buying you groceries and everything. And the first thing you do is see somebody that's inspiring you on TV and cinema offering and won't even pay your tithes and your offering. Let me tell you something in here. Ah, that's not the way to be blessed. I don't care how many lines you get in until you learn how to submit to the authority. And listen here, you can't decide as a child what channel you want to be born through. You can't get out of one womb and say, I want to be birthed out over here. Wherever God placed you, that's where God going to birth you out at. Watch this. So I don't care how powerful you think I am. I got to go to Wednesday night service. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I got to be at Wednesday night Bible study like everybody else do. Come on here, somebody. Ain't no big shot in my church. I'm somebody that God is still working on. Come on here. I got to be in Friday night service. I got to be in early morning, 6 o'clock prayer. I got to be on time for Sunday school. Oh, that's what you're missing. Honey, you think because God raised you up, now you finished? No, that's your time to back up and get back under the man of God. And say, every time I go out and I give out, I got to come back and be filled again. Let me tell you. I don't know God. God is doing something. 
He doing something right now. Just let me stay right here for a minute. Let me stay right here for just, 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 just five, five seconds. And I got ready to leave. I said, you know what? I said, God has called me to leave the ministry and he's sending me somewhere else. And I didn't, see, I wasn't released. I went. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And see, I'm going to tell you something. God ain't leading you to leave your church if God ain't prepared no place for you to go. Because when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he already had a prepared place for them. So don't tell my God telling you to leave and they... And somebody said, where are you going? I don't know. Sit down. That ain't God. That's your flesh. Not wanting to be worked over and molded and made and shaped. That's that spirit of rebellion that God trying to work out. Y'all ain't saying, oh man, I just messed up the offering right there. I said, yeah, I'm ready to leave. Because you know why I had a couple of parking lot prophecies. And that's why God began to rebuke me about my own ministry. He said, don't you dare call nobody out. Out in the parking lot, come giving them a word from God. And see, I had a, little, a couple of folk blowing my head up. You so powerful. You so this. God going to take you all over the country. He going to raise you up. But see, the thing of it is, is that they forgot to tell me about God's timing. The right season. Some of y'all done went, but you went in the wrong season. And when you go and it ain't your season, you have to pay the penalty. And some of y'all say, I've been struggling for six years. That's because you went six years too soon. Therefore, you got to struggle until you get to your destined season. God said to you that your ministry is coming forth in 1998. And you move out in 1997. The whole year 97 going to be hell for you until you get to 98. And that's why I found out, I got this your breakthrough. No, it wasn't your breakthrough until 98. You went on your own. And I said to God, I said, you know what? It's time for me to go. Walk right from under leadership. Went on about my business. Ended up in the wrong relationship. Ended up marrying somebody crazy. Oh, but see, then I, I, listen, I still didn't learn. When I got to the next ministry and sat down for about eight and a half years, then I got, oh, it's time for me to go again because now, see, you got to be careful when God purged you because when you look in the mirror and look clean of yourself, that's dangerous. The Bible said, woe unto the man that measure himself by himself. For that man is a fool. What matter of man that you look in the mirror and behold yourself. And then turn from the mirror and forget about what manner of person you are. Oh, don't give me that, honey. You know you better than anybody do. You know all of your mess. Y'all, let me just teach this. I went out there. Next thing you know. Say sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Sha ta 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 on my way to heaven. Caught up in a, a fornicating relationship. Singing in the choir. Leading songs in the choir. And let me let me listen. Let me throw a curve and tan up the church. Still got my anointed and still fornicate. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing here tonight. You know why? Because gifts and callings. You ain't got to be saved to have an anointing. Michael Jackson got one. Luther Vandross got an anointing. Whitney Houston got an anointing. Come on here, somebody. And God began to say to me, look at you. Oh, you got it going on, honey. You fooling the people. But remember, I know you. I know you. No. And God began to say to me, don't you ever be impressed because you can draw a crowd. He said, because your relatives will always come to you. You, you, you didn't get that. See, that's the reason why when some of y'all bring y'all unsaved relative to church, they sit right up on the bench next to you and say, that one up there ain't nothing to him. That girl right there singing. Ain't nothing to her. You know why? Because people in the world got a discernment. They know they own kind. Come on here, somebody. And let me tell you, don't ever be impressed because.
because you can draw a crowd because you're not joining God's people you're joining people of your same kind pastors I'll tell you when you know you're drawing your kind when you know you're drawing the people of God because you ain't got no problem with them tithing and giving y'all ain't gonna say nothing Okay, I done already messed up, so I ain't looking for no amens, no how. I came in here with an amen in me. And every time I say what God, I hear God saying amen. So that's okay, honey. Folks, you got to beg to give and beg to come to church and beg them to teach Sunday school. Them ain't God's folk. Them folk, come on, somebody. Oh, listen, all they are is groupies. And I'm going to tell you what happened to folk like that. You, you come around here talking about God said come as you are he said come as I am and ain't nobody gonna tell me how to look ain't nobody gonna tell me how to dress ain't nobody gonna tell me my dress too short ain't nobody gonna tell me that by wearing my clothes too low the devil is a lie and God said come as I am and see what happened is they come and after they're there for six months to a year and then when somebody start telling them about the devil then they say it's time for me to leave so what they do is they keep starting all over again because you know what they don't want you to mess with their devil they don't want to be delivered they don't want to grow they want to just keep coming as they are y'all ain't saying nothing because I'm hitting somebody in here that's why and listen until you learn how to sit yourself down somewhere and let somebody break you and let somebody train you and let somebody birth you you ain't going nowhere in God where's your track record well my name is Evander so and so who birthed you where you get that anointing from where was your last church? I belong to St. Stephen's Pentecost. And where was you before that? Where's your letter? Give me your pastor's phone number. Because if you was a hellion over here, we don't need no more hellions over here. And if you can't stand the rebuke across town, you ain't no, y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Y'all, y'all, the Holy Ghost got me going in here. To my I like it over here. I feel so comfortable. I really feel calm. It's a dip and spin. They're going to come on to one church trying to talk about the last church. And the only reason why you had a problem with them is because they found you out. But honey, you just give us six months. We're going to find you out too. And it's time to take the mask off. God is saying tonight, you need to reach up your own self and take the mask off and say, God, I need somebody to train my spirit. I need some help. Talking about I want somebody to mentor me. I'm so sick of folks coming in, passing me notes. Can you mentor me? Well, let me tell you something, honey. Mentoring is not nobody training you. The power for somebody to mentor you is what are you willing to take off of them? Not take from them. You get mentored by what you can take off of them. Come on here, somebody. If your pastor can rebuke you and you shut your mouth and say, yes, sir, pastor, you being mentored. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But see, some of us in this hour, we can't take nothing. As soon as somebody rebuke you, you're mad. You don't want to give. You don't want to come back to church. Well, let me tell you, somebody, you better get out the way because there's a whole lot of folk that won't God. It's something for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You ain't nothing but a stumbling block. And God is saying tonight, everybody in here, take the pacifier out of your mouth. It's time to grow up. Ain't nobody rubbing you up no more. Ain't nobody coming to get you no more. Make up in your mind tonight. It's either holiness or hell. If you want to be saved, let's go. If you don't, get out of the way. Where's your integrity? With your lying, speaking in tongues, self. Where's your integrity? Where's your word? Ta 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 ta, nothing. Sit down. Sit down until them tongues can lead you and guide you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Don't speak another tongue if it can't stop you from fornicating. Y'all ain't. Cause see, you ain't got no Holy Ghost. I'm so sick of folks that my, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't goosebumps, baby. The Holy Ghost ain't quickening. The Holy Ghost ain't a cute little dance and crossing your legs and squaring up on the floor and sliding to the left. The Holy Ghost is a leader and a guide and a teacher. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you in the old truth. Come on, somebody. How come I can see the Holy Ghost when you dance, when you shout, when you speak in tongues, but when it comes down to your life, I can't find it. 
Can't find. Can't find the Holy Ghost. Can't find it. Where is your Holy Ghost now? Where is it? And God is saying, here we are. We're getting pregnant with things of God and bringing forth. <sighs> Ain't producing no babies. Ain't giving birth to nothing. When was the last time you brought somebody to Jesus? He didn't save you for you. He didn't have to do that. He saved you to bring somebody else. When the last time you've been to the hospital, y'all ain't, ain't going to like me tonight, so I can just hang it up anyway. When the last time you went to the hospital and volunteered on the service, but see, no, you got to get your nails done. You got to get your hair done. We are such a materialistic church, but yet and still we want miracles and don't want to pay for it. Well, let me tell you, miracles don't happen in the beauty shop, baby. Oh, y'all ain't going to like me tonight. Ah, come on here, somebody. Ah, you wanted a 19 on your life. From behind my pastor. Everywhere he go. I follow behind him. He said he's staying in the church. I'm staying right there. I'm right there by his door. They said she ain't number the flunky. That's right. Because I walked into the ministry five years ago. On welfare. Lost my job with holes in my shoes. And I was going through the McDonald's line buying a, buying a Coke and asking them for extra napkin just so I can have toilet paper. I was slipping notes to saints in the church asking them to give me money to buy toothpaste. Y'all ain't gonna like me now. See, I was, living, I was living somewhere where I had to shake roaches out of my clothes before I put them on. But God told me if I submit myself under my leader, he didn't tell me to run all over the countryside. He said, if I, listen, he said, if you would submit yourself, and let me tell you something about my pastor, I don't even think he got a seventh grade education. And you know, he missed pronounce a lot of words you know what I'm saying he an old country man that's about 70 something years old and he can't have talking he don't know nothing about homiletics and dumbletics he don't know how to break it down to step one and step two but oh he got the power of God on his life he can tell you how to get under the anointing he can show you how to get a prayer through and God has said in the last hour you ain't gonna need a lot of intellect because what am I doing the last hour you're gonna need power And when he said fast, I'm not talking about this little, little, little stuff y'all do. Fasting 21 days with soups. When he said fast, it's 21 days and you can't even have water. When we got ready to move into our new church, he said, we got to sanctify the grounds. We went inside the new church and the whole bottom floor of the church was nothing but concrete. They hadn't even finished laying down the carpet and nothing else. He said, we're going to have all night prayer for three days. And let me tell you, we went in that church and we had to lay down on concrete all night long. We had to take turns praying. Come on here, somebody. And I'm not talking about faking it like y'all do and praying tongues. No, he said, I don't want no tongues. I want you to pray in English. He said, I want to hear where your word level is. And when we get through praying, he pull you in the office and Say you ain't been studying your Bible because you didn't have enough to say in English. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But see, no, 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 honey. You want something instant. You want somebody to blow on you and lay hands on you. And you think you're going to get up off the floor and all of a sudden you're going to be great. The devil is a lie. You ain't going to be nothing. That little mess you're going to get going to last you about a year. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And all of a sudden, you ain't going to feel your anointing. But God said it takes years to be processed. No, they ain't saying nothing. It takes somebody looking be behind that facade. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And one day, I walked in church, and I walked in church one Sunday morning, and I was late, and somebody got my briefcase and walked me down to the middle of the church, and we got about 2,000 members, and pastor stopped in the middle of his message and said, who do you think you are? You walking in here all late, and somebody said, sit down somewhere. Now, you know, right then and there, I could have got an attitude, but you know what? The Bible said the rebuke is good for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Rebuke drives you to correction, and until you can learn to take rebuke, you ain't going nowhere. Listen, 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 listen. Everybody can't rub you. Everybody can't tell you how great you are. You need to get around somebody that's going to criticize what you are. That's going to tell you where you're missing it. That's going to tell you where you're short at. That's going to tell you that you ain't got an anointing. Ah, oh, yeah, you need somebody to be honest with you and say to you, I thought a little bit of somebody that wasn't real great. Y'all, I'm going to sit down. I'd have messed up something too. I 
I done jacked up for real. You need somebody to tell you you ain't cute. I got under my man of God. I got under my pastor. And I was poor, Bishop. When I said poor, I didn't have nothing. I, I couldn't even get to church. And I, somebody sold me a raggedy piece of car with one window missing out of the one side on the driver's side. It was a two-door Chevy Cavalier. And all across the front seat and the back seat, the springs were out of the seat. And every Sunday morning, I would tear my stockings up. And when it rained, honey, by the time I got to church, this whole side of my outfit would be soaking wet. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. And the devil said, you a fool. They said, right now, you can get your back book and start calling all your old friends that you knew. And they'll let you come and run a revival. But God said, I'm trying to work an anointing in you, not a meeting. What I want to put in you is bigger than a one-night revival. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And see, that's the reason why I can't be bought and I can't be sold because I'm bigger than an offering. <laughs> what I got you can't buy it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, what I got you can't buy it and it can't be manipulated by dollars. Y'all don't want to hear me. See, God got to help you so he can give you some good sense. And I said, God, I said, what do you want me to do? He said, stay with this man of God. Every Tuesday, every Tuesday afternoon, they call it faith clinic. Wasn't but about 20 folk in the church. And I would be right there every Tuesday. Every Friday night, I'd be right there on the front row. And God said to me, I want you to intercede for the man of God. I want you to be his intercessor. And so I would sit there on the front row and I'd be interceding. When the pastor hit the floor and he started getting up to preach, I can tell you what demons were attacking him because I was into him. God connected me to his spirit. And I was the person, I was a daughter of Zion. The Bible said the daughter of Zion protect she stands on the wall and she guards the house of God I stood there come on here somebody like a watchdog and I was interceding for my pastor and praying for him and saying come on Jesus give it to him his body don't feel good today but God give him a word and when the power of God fall God was saying to me I'm gonna pay you for that And I wasn't somewhere running around the country trying to get behind doors and trying to get in the big room and trying to get back there and get both my card and, and tell my, I know you now. You introduce me to him and give him my name and tell him who I am. And the next time, get me in that conference. And God said, I don't want you doing that manipulating junk. He said, because if somebody take you up, they can pull you down.
his way. Somebody better lift your hands up. All over the country. I just see a big sword in the spirit. And it's like God is going across the country. Cutting down everything that's not his. Because you know, some people have raised themselves up. Do you not know that there are some people that God has sat down and they're still standing in the earth, but in heaven they've been sat down? And because they got earthly connections, they still going through doors and they still being elevated and they still, y'all yep, don't, don't get it, you don't get it. And then some of you say, well then how do you know that person? And I'm going to tell you how you can recognize a person like that. Because they got a big name across the country, but when you go and hear them preach, you can't feel nothing. You don't sense no anointing. And you say, but I thought people said they was powerful. I thought, you know why? Because God has been set you down. And the Bible said that God put it up one. And he take it down another. But the most powerful word in the earth today is we need to ask God to give us an anointing to follow the leader. Wait. I didn't, I, listen. Before I take my seat, I didn't come in here to dance you. I don't care if you don't shout. And I keep telling y'all, you got the wrong person because I ain't trying to be famous. I ain't trying to get nowhere. I had enough experiences to know. When I'm out here on the field. And I'm ministering. I go to a church and I hit a dead wall. And I don't know. It seems like I can't get a breakthrough. I get on the phone and call my pastor. As a pastor, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in Kentucky and I don't know, I'm dealing with something and I'm, I've been preaching for the last two nights and something won't break. And he said, give me a couple of minutes and call me back. He said, I'm going in prayer. And when he called me back and he said, you dealing with a spirit of da 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 da. Come against this spirit and begin to have the people to do this and it's going to break. See, listen, I'm on this platform at night and this is not Juanita Bynum's anointing preaching. This is Dr. John H. Boyd preaching. You understand what I'm saying? See, listen, listen. What causes you to be anointed is when you are preaching under the anointing that God has transmitted in you and you're preaching under your, under your pastor's anointing and your whole church is backing you up that's what causes the anointing to be on your life not some little prayer meeting in some little corner and in your own little private whatever and you just think you're just so spiritual and deep no it don't happen that way it happens when you get among the people of God in your church and allow the folk in the choir and on the nurses board to challenge your anointing and to challenge your walk with God and I know it's rough in the church sometimes I know your own don't receive it but God said if you can take the pressure from the inside, then I know you'll be able to take it from the outside. Don't come talking about you ready to go out and preach and you go out and minister and you can't even take folk in your own church talking about you. Come on here, somebody. Y'all, I'm finished. God, God gave me a word. And I want you to know something. The spirit of the trainer, I want you to hear this, watch this. The spirit of the trainer is coming to train your spirit to be submitted. Because your pastor, when I first walked in New Greater Bethel Ministries, he looked right at me and said, your worst days is behind you, little lady. He said, I don't know you, but God said, God said, your best days is ahead of you. He said, God said, there's a ministry on the inside of you and he's going to raise you up. First time I ever walked in the church. And pastor, let me tell you, everything that God has done in my life, he's done it through my pastor. I don't miss his appreciation services. I don't take him for granted. And when he hits the floor on Sunday mornings, don't pass me no notes, don't ask me for no mint, don't interrupt me. Because my lifeline is on the floor. The word that comes out of his mouth, not the singing, not the choir, but the word that comes out of his mouth is the word that's going to take me through the week. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing. And when the choir song then faded out of my spirit, I could hear my pastor in situations saying, you're going to make it. I could hear the word that he preached. Do you understand what I'm saying? And the greatest miracles I told the people today, I stand in this place today, five years ago on welfare, holes in my shoes. The Lord blessed me. I bought my father a Lincoln. I bought my mother a Mercedes Benz. I bought a car, 1992 Toyota Camry, brand new off the lot. And had it for a year and God told me to pay it off and give it to a sister in the church. And the people loved, laughed at me and said, and I went to pastor. I said, pastor, God told me to get this car. And pastor said, I'm God said, he's raising you up to have great faith. And God said to me, if you believe I'm going to give you a Mercedes, then you ain't got to wait until I, you ain't got to hold on to this. He said, because this is the kind of seed that's going to get you what you want. And I paid the car off, twenty-some thousand dollars I owed $18,000. I went to the bank, took the money out, took it to the bank, paid off the car, walked up to her that Sunday morning and said, God said, take these keys. This is your car. And God said to me, I'm teaching you early. How to let everything you got roll off your back like water on a duck's back. He said, don't hold on to nothing because every time I tell you to release something, I got a greater miracle for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I stand before you tonight. Not because I'm proud, because God has taken my name across the country. But I told the people today, I own a house in Chicago. I own an apartment building in Chicago. I just move in a $200,000 house. I drive a 300 SC Mercedes. And I got stocks. Let me tell you something. If you don't give me a dime, I got a savings account. You got to be crazy if you think I'm out here preaching this kind of word. <laughs> I got CDs. I got stocks. But my pastor said to me, now take this money and do this. Now take that and do that. Uh -uh, don't put too much over here. Don't spend too much over there. Do that. Do this. Now do this and do this to your ministry. And move it from here to there. Take it from over here and put it over here. You need to let that person go. Because now that their hour with you is up, God going to bring somebody else in. Let me tell you something. I'm where I am today because I learned how to follow my leader. Some of y'all in this building never thought you'd ever get a word like this tonight. But you ought to reach over and touch your neighbor. And I know their jaws may be tight right now. Just say, you know what? She bust us out tonight because it's the truth. And I don't mean to hurt your feelings tonight. I don't mean to hurt your feelings tonight. I don't. But you got some people that sit in this conference right here. And your pastor don't even know you here. You don't just get up and go when you feel like it. Who did you ask? Well, I'm grown. No, 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 baby. Let me help you out. When you ask the men of God and you ask for his prayers and his release. And you going out of town. I don't care if you're going to Disneyland. When he tells you to go, that means God is obligated to protect you because of his word. But when you go on your own, honey, you ain't got no protection. You just out there by yourself. You can fall off a ride and break your neck and don't nobody even know where you are. When I go out and I go out and my pastor, I don't even take a vacation unless I ask. Pastor, I want to go to the Bahamas. Who are you going with? I'm going with so-and-so, so-and-so. Mm -mm, don't go with her. Wrong trip, wrong time. Yes, sir, pastor. When I got ready to get my car, the white car, the 92 Camry, I walked in my pastor's office. I said, pastor, I want to get this car. And I had picked out the Toyota Celica. And I said, I love this car right here. And the pastor said to me, he said, you can't get this car. I said, why not? He said, you got to watch your image. You're a woman of God. He said, this is a sports car. It lets off the wrong message. And I said, but pastor, this is the car I wanted. He said, obey the pastor. Don't buy that one. Buy that other car. I said, what car? He said, what is called the Camry? I said, the Toyota Camry. I don't like that car. He said, buy it anyway. And I bought the car. A year later, somebody used my car to go to the store and they got into an accident with it. Pastor came outside and said, what happened to your car? I said, sister so-and-so borrowed my car to go down the street and somebody ran the stop sign and hit her. And he said, take your car over to so-and-so, 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 so-and-so street and I'm going to call him. And when they got there, the man said, you, 
you Reverend Boyd remember I said yeah he said he told me you was coming he said give me your keys I dropped my car off the next day I came back to get it I asked the man how much do I owe you he said you don't owe me nothing he said Reverend Boyd paid for it I went back to pastor I said pastor I said why don't you pay for my car he said because I told you to get it anything I tell you to do I'm responsible if you do something on your own you responsible y'all ain't and see listen this. you ain't got no business buying a house or nothing else unless you ask the man of God because if they bless it and something happens to it it obligates them to help you because you did it by their word you don't know how many men I done brought to my church that said God said you my wife and you know what I tell them meet me at 215-32 Jamaica Avenue next Sunday and when I walk up and say, Pastor, this is brother so-and-so, brother so-and-so, this is Pastor. And, and we have this thing, if Pastor, shake your hand and say, God bless your son. Pleasure meeting you. And walk off, that means get rid of him. And every time I say, Pastor, this is brother so-and-so. And he take his hand and he said, God bless your son. Nice to meet you. I go. And he said to me, he said, I can see further than you. He said, you looking in the flesh and I'm looking in the spirit. He said, I got your back and I don't have any ulterior motives. He said, I'm your father in the gospel. And I can't give your hand to a crook. And I'm going to tell you something that my pastor said to me, single women. He said, you looking at somebody that can accommodate you now. He said, and I'm the man of God and I'm looking at somebody that can accommodate where you're going. He said, because you may marry somebody right now and y'all perfect. And 10 years from now, he can't handle where you're going. He said, so what I'm looking at is your future and you're looking at your right now. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Y'all single women, I just lost y'all right there. And God said, why do you think? Why do you think that some of y'all married right now and you married somebody? Y'all was perfect when y'all got married. And then five years later, you can't stand each other. You know why? Because the person didn't have what it took to accommodate where you were going. Everybody in this place tonight, as I take my seat, I have to tell you what God said. I gave a word tonight, and I gave a word yesterday, and I'm just going to obey the Lord. I've never been to a conference and gave a word like this since I've been in the ministry. My mother can tell you, never. I don't, I, I, God, God, God put that out there. God put that out there. And everybody in this place tonight, and the act of obedience, let me tell you something. I got, I got to go. And it, it, tomorrow I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, going to Florida on vacation. Pastor said to me, you need to go and rest somewhere. Preaching too hard. And let me tell you something. You got to get dedicated to your church. I work just as hard in the women's department as I do on the field. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Selling cakes and, 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 and cleaning up the kitchen and, and serving folk and stuff. You, look, you come to my church, you wouldn't even think I was who y'all think I am. Because I'm going to tell you something, you ain't no greater than you are in your own home church. You can go across country and make people think you're the best thing since Santa Claus. But I'm going to tell you what greatness is. Greatness is when you can sit among your own kind and they respect you. I push harder to be respected by my own peers in my own church. Because it's real, it's real respect with people who see you every day and they know your life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And when God began to bless me, I was the first woman in 17 years that my pastor ever invited to sit on the pulpit with him. The first woman to sit on the pulpit. I was the first member of our church of 23 years who ever preached the tent. And our tent seats about 2,000 people and it is a major thing. Is that a fact? I was the first member to preach the tent. And this year in our women's conference, we've never had an official day. Pastor's never given us a Sunday morning service. I was the first woman to ever preach a Sunday morning service. That's when I cry. Other people's platforms don't make me cry. When I can be great in my own church. That's when there's honor. The Lord said to me tonight, we got to learn how to be covenant. 
every person in this building tonight. I want you to do something out of obedience. And if you're mad, ain't nobody mad but the devil. But I like y'all. Now that wasn't me. So smile at me. That was, I didn't just preach that. That was God. Come on. Give me some. Come on. That wasn't me. I like you. That wasn't me. That wasn't me teaching. You don't have to sit there looking at me like, that wasn't me. That was God. I want to be a blessing to the woman of God. She's not here. But I count it an honor and a privilege that she could leave me in her pulpit and trust the fact that everything was going to be all right.